So we got one, two, three, three, four projects going in the shop right now. Why not add another one? So this uh, 2005 Sportster that we're going to build. So because of the way the neck and frame are on these rubber mount Sportsters, um, if you want to put a springer on it, um, you don't really have much room for an inline traditional style springer like most of the aftermarket ones are. So we're going to try out one of these Moto Iron ones. You had to go with the, um, the one that was built for this frame. Um, a little more expensive, but we're going to see how it fits. Nice finish quality. Chrome looks good. I was afraid it's going to be like a real cheap looking chrome. But this actually looks pretty good. Yeah. There's your top clamp. That ain't bad. Hmm. I wonder if you have to run that. I would imagine you do. Looks like the neck is a, uh, or the stem is a, uh, a bolt in piece. That's okay. It's got a good fit to it. Pretty snug and tight. There's your fork stops. Like I was saying on that neck, you gotta have an offset to run with these frames. That's why I had to get this one instead of uh, the uh, standard one they sell. The only thing I'm not pleased with is the fit on the rockers. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of movement going on there. You can see it there. So we, we'll probably uh, try to improve upon that. All right, let's see how this movie fits. I've left this, uh, I think this little spacer here it needs to stay on the bottom because the uh, races are pretty deep up inside there. And this is my, uh, my mock-up stem bearing. Uh, uses the same race, but the ID is a little bigger. So I can just slip it down on there for mocking things up. Fits pretty good. You can see how the steering stops work. And the offset clears this down tube in the frame. One thing I'm not too keen on is how the bearings and this nut kind of recess down into the neck. You can't really use a uh, dust shield, and I don't like that. So I think I've got the dust shield situation sorted out. Standard bottom one, the big one. Put it on, then the little spacer, and then my mock-up bearing for now. On the top, the top one, dust shield doesn't fit. So what I've done is over on the lathe, stainless steel washer, I've cut it down, the OD and the ID, to fit and it should fit up in there pretty good. Good work as a dust shield. Let's see. And our top nut. All right, that looks pretty good. Bottom dust cap clears. And my uh, 
washer on the top looks good looks way better than just those exposed bearings up there so I think that'll work out real nice so the next thing I'm going to try to work out is this front wheel The late model um, aluminum hubs, narrow glide hubs, um, fit into these TC Bros uh, or Moto Iron Springers really nicely. They're shimmed for them, they run real good. Um, I didn't want to run their Springer brake though, so this is a, uh, a real Harley Springer brake off of like a Heritage Springer or, you know, any soft tail Springer. Um, since we're going to use this hub, we can go ahead and do axle spacers. Um, the ones provided with the Springer actually get you pretty damn close. Um, but if you're going to run, if you're going to run one of these calipers, I can tell already that the caliper needs to shift this way. So to remedy that, I'm going to come in, I'm going to take this over to the lathe and I'm going to chop off that little shoulder right there on, on that little spacer right there. Okay, so this is the, this is the spacer that we're going to want to trim up because when all is said and done you want this bracket to be floating meaning when it's all stacked up you want the sleeve on the inside to be longer than all the spacers and stacked up parts including the bracket all shimmed up with pretty minor modifications um, all the shim or all the uh, spacers that came with this Moto Iron Springer I used and just had to modify these a bit. So you can see that the axle is tight, so the sleeves, of course, are fixed, um, you know, through the bearings. But we can we still got good caliper movement. Hardly any side to side play. I mean, it's it's nice and tight, but it's not locking up. So that's good. So anybody who's interested in, in doing this modification to run this caliper, um, if you're interested, um, on this side, as we showed earlier, I pretty much just machined off the, uh, the lip that was on this spacer right here. Um, and so uh, what they tallied up to, including the washers, the brass washers, on this side came to 208 thousandths worth of the brass washer and the spacer. On this side, the stack of uh, the, the spacer and the two washers and a little shim, this side totaled 370 thousandths. And that moved the caliper over and I got good clearance here. And like, like I showed you, it, it moves good and doesn't lock down. Um, I've got a, a washer and a little, and a little shim um, spaced out just to just to get it where I need it I'll probably come in and cut a new spacer to go on that side so I don't have so many washers stacked up but um, so that worked out good next up I'm gonna try to adjust the slop in these rockers and I've got a plan to do so we're going to, have to take it apart and see if it's gonna work so I have just pulled the, uh, the cotter pins out of these castle nuts and we'll see how these babies are put together. I've just got a flat washer. Flat washer should just pull out. Yep. So, yeah, we've just got a... Uh, a shouldered bolt here. That looks like half inch fine thread. Half, half 20. Um, and the problem lies when you put this bolt in here you can see that hole is a little bigger than half inch so that's where we're getting our slop from all right so here's the plan right here um, half inch 20 Healy coils and we're gonna thread each leg and these are a little long we'll have to trim them but that I thought about just making a bushing to kind of take up the slack, taking up this slack right here. But I think that if we if we thread them with our Healy coils, these will thread in, 
shoulder out. We'll still put the nut on the back side, of course, to hold it in, but that'll just take up. It's not so much we're relying on the Healy coils to fasten the studs. The nuts are doing that. The Healy coils are more or less going to end up taking up the free space to get rid of this. Because um, it's a very minuscule amount. Um, I just got, just taking, kind of taking a crude measurement of the holes here. And we're coming in at 518. Yeah, 517, 518 thousandths on these holes. So they are, you know, 17, 18 thousandths bigger than half inch. Uh, but that works out okay for what we're doing. Uh, half 20 Healy coil. Uh, the tap requires a 3364ths drill bit. 3364ths in um, decimals comes out to uh, 515. Tap started. And that hole's already right on size. That tap started. No problem. Nice and straight. That looks good. Maybe they planned for us to do this. Already drilled our hole out. I guess they just, um, you know, they probably make, for mass production, make the hole a little bigger than half. So once it's chrome plated, you got variations in your plating processes just for ease of assembly on the back end, is probably why they make them a little loose. Clean it out of any cutting fluid because I'm going to. I'm going to Loctite these Healy coils in. Okay, and let's see down there. And just grind off that. That feels good. Okay, that's nice and flush. All right, both legs are Healy coiled. I just ground them down so that they're flush. Put a little grease inside the rockers. Okay, so a long stud and a short stud. Long studs for your thicker rear leg. And now these are just going to thread in. And like I said, this is, I mean, the, we're not relying on these Healy coils to to uh, fasten the rockers, it's more or less just taking up that free space. I'm just going to snug those down. I mean, those don't have to be super tight. And everything's still free. I can feel it. But we don't have that, that slop in those rockers anymore. I mean, they're still, I can feel that the rockers have side play, which is good, a little bit, so they can move, they're not bound up. That's working good. Alright, so we'll just assemble the back side. So we still got these nuts really kind of holding everything together. All right, there you go. That's on. Let's see. We'll get it on the ground and bouncing it, but you can see we're still 
those shoulder bolts are shouldered out, nothing's in a bind. All that rocker arm play is gone. So I think we've got a good fix here. So all in all, I'm really pleased with um, this Moto Iron Springer. A few, spent a few bucks, did a few modifications, and um, all in, you're still pretty affordable and um, really nice looking Springer. Um, got a real Harley front brake, had to do just mi minor modifications to the spacers, but got a real Harley Springer brake, that was definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Got the rockers fitting nice and uh, nice and solid, and um, our little dust cap that we made up here turned out really nice. Um, so I'm really pleased with it. For the money, you can't beat them. I think it's going to ride good, and it really looks good too.